and welcome to episode 79 of the Tea and Possibilities podcast. I'm Nikki and this is a podcast all about knitting, crochet and making all the things here in northwest London. You can find me on Instagram at hippie underscore Nikki and I will leave links to everything I talk about just down there in the box. Where possible, I will link to non-Ravelry um, sites for you to check out yarns, patterns, and things like that. However, where I can only link to Ravelry, I will make sure that it is very, very clearly marked. So if you're avoiding Ravelry, you will know which links not to click. On that note, I am hoping to follow in the footsteps of the Knitmore Girls who are creating um, project pages on their website going forward, and they're linking to those rather than their Ravelry pages. They might be linking to both, I can't actually remember. Um, but I thought that was a really great solution to the problem. Um, I am working on a website so I can house all of my um, kind of creative stuff in one place. Uh, but that is a real work in progress and I'm sure anyone uh, who's ever tried to build a website on their own with no knowledge of how to do so um, <laughs> understands that that is a really difficult thing to do and might take a little while so please do bear with me uh, regarding that. I'm also going to try and find some time to check out Ribbler because I've heard a lot about it and I do have um, a login, I got a, an email or something about it to test it um, which was ages ago now so I don't even know if it's still in testing uh, but I am going to check it out and obviously I will report back on how I feel about it once I have had a really thorough go on it. I don't want to just like look at it once and then be like, this is what I think. I'd like to try it quite a bit before I share my opinion on that. Now, as always, a massive welcome and thank you to any new viewers. I really appreciate you giving the podcast a shot. And to my returning viewers, a massive thank you for coming back every episode, especially at times like these, when it's been a little while. Today's tea is in what has become my standard, my big bucket mug, which was a gift from the lovely Caroline of Dunder Knit and the Knitting Vicariously podcast. And in here today is something that I didn't think was going to come in time for this podcast, so I'm just gonna grab it and show you. Now Instagram for once actually advertised something to me that I was very interested in, and I have found very crafty, um, crafty. <laughs> you get it? Um, and they, um, I'm going to read it out to you. The idea behind Very Crafty is simple, sourcing the best ethical loose leaf tea and creating modern, funny and often sweary sewing kits. Everything you need to drink tea and craft on, just add biscuits. Now I didn't actually realise until these came this morning um, that they did do sewing kits because I clicked straight through on the advert, um, it really worked on me, you can tell, and um, just went straight to the tea page and got myself these tasters. So. Um, I thought I'd only ordered one taster of this one, but I've got two, so oops. This one is China Ki Moon, which is, oh, it has a description, here we go. A rich, smoky and sophisticated blend, a fancy alternative to a standard brew, and once tasted, there will be no going back to tea bags. And that is from China. And as you can see, it's quite a dark leaf tea, very granular, very um, fine. So that's that one. I also got, um, and I'm really sorry about the pronunciation on these, I'm, I'm probably going to get it wrong. Um, tai Guan Yin, there you go, I'll hold it up. Not quite green tea, not quite black tea. Oolong is an inviting middle ground of beautifully rolled leaves with a delicate sweet edge. And that is also from China. And this, I don't know if you can see, where the um, Ki Moon was quite fine. This, uh, and quite dark as well. This is a lot more green and is quite chunky, quite um, big lumps. So I've got that. But what I am drinking currently is Silver Needles. And this is hand-picked young buds with minimal processing, mean this tea is delicate, light, with sweet floral undertones. And that is also from China. And this is completely different to the other two. It's very, very pale. And it's just these long kind of leaves dried up and kind of curled up. And they do, if you look really closely, kind of look a bit furry. <laughs> so you look like little rabbit ears, which is quite fun. They were like one to two pounds per taster. So I thought that was quite an economical way of trying a few different teas. And I've got, I think maybe three to four cups from each of these. So I'm really excited to try those. I brewed up just the one cup. I've got the, um, the manatee, you know, and you put it in 
his bum and he just hangs on the edge of your mug. I have taken him out now because it has brewed, um, so you're going to miss that. But this is Silver Needles. Oh my god, there is a floral undertone. I'm going to be honest with you, much as I love tea, I am not like a really specific -y taste person. I went to um, a wine tasting once and people were kind of going, yes, I've got undertones of coffee and rose and caramel. And I was like, wine? And then I'd sip another one, I'd be like, mmm, white wine. Mmm red wine like they taste different but I can't isolate the different flavors it's probably just practice but I couldn't do it and I remember with one of the white wines I I really was able to kind of define that it had a mineral kind of flavor and I got really excited about that but all that to say even I with my um unskilled taste buds can get the floral undertones there which is pretty cool that's really lovely well that was me going on an awful lot about tea more so than usual and i am sorry for that but i am very excited to have a new to me company to check out i really love um, bird and blend um and I actually have a couple of their pumpkin-y, autumn-y chai kind of flavours that I want to try out soon. Uh, but I'm really excited to have uh, Crafty to try. So, yay! Now, as I said at the beginning there, it has been some time. Now, I knew that August was going to be a busy month. Now, for those of you who don't know, I work at a university and in the UK, I'm saying that because I don't know if this happens internationally, um, but we have something called clearing. So, you know, you apply to university, you are accepted or whatever, and you kind of have your choice. However, after results come in, there is something available called clearing. And that is basically where you can ring round and see if you can get a better offer. For example, if your uh, results have been better than you expected, or if you haven't quite got the results you were expecting, uh, you can ring around and see where else you can get in. And it's basically the way that universities fill up the remaining slots on their courses. Now, because I am new to the institution and I kind of wanted to get a flavor of what goes on during clearing, um, and it's a really busy time apart from anything else, I volunteered to be on the phones and that was a lot. <laughs> it was a lot. I was working quite long days. I did a lot of overtime for it. Um, and as you can imagine, in the current climate, results um, and getting university places and all of that has become less straightforward than it usually is. So it just became a very busy time. It became quite stressful. I'm pretty good when I finish work at just going, okay, well, I'm done being stressed now, um, which is good but also I'm then quite tired. So yeah, I just decided, do you know what? I'm just gonna not try and make videos in August because there is set up. I have to like brush my hair, <laughs> write scripts or show notes, and it's a lot of work. And I just thought, you know what? Let me, let me just focus on the one thing this month. But now I'm back. And I'm back a little later than I intended because then I spent the first week of September house and dog sitting and I don't know, it'd be weird to film a podcast in someone else's house. I didn't want to lug all my stuff over there. Um, I didn't really want to come all the way home to do that. So I don't know why I'm miming that. Just, I, I got a train. I was masked up, but I got a train. I didn't like jog the 20, 30 miles that it was. Um, so yeah, that is why I'm back a little bit late. If you are somebody who entered the Summer of Socks Cow, thank you. It ended on the 31st of August and I will be announcing winners later on in Whipped Up, towards the end of Whipped Up before uh, Knit and Natter. So please stay tuned for that. And that is a lot of talking for the intro. So let's move on to Whipped Up. It's a bit of a weird one for whipped up this week and I actually don't think this has ever happened um actually now it occurs to me I think the podcast turns four this month so in four years of podcasting I don't think this has ever happened because I pretty much have no whips to show you I only have 
foes. Now, spoiler alert, because of the Summer of Socks knit along, it's, it's socks. <laughs> it's been a sock heavy month. All my foes are socks. So we're going to start in the order in which I finish them. So these are the first ones, and you have never seen them before. So the um, pattern is my usual vanilla sock pattern, which is cuffed down and is based on the video series by the lovely ladies over at Meanwhile at the Castle. And I knit this out of Adelaide Cottage Toasty Sock, which is the main body colour here. And this is in Reader, I Married Him. And the, I want to say contrast, but it's kind of a more complementary um, heel and toe is in a mini that I have from Fine Fish Yarns and um, I don't actually know what this colour is called which is a shame because it's a pretty spot on millennial pink. Um, I didn't, I, I didn't trust myself um, to make the right call regarding whether or not I should do the contrast for the cuff as well which is my usual as you know so I just decided to do the toe and heel. I think I could have squeaked it out but I didn't want to risk it. So the story behind these is that these aren't for my sock drawer. These are actually for a friend. I wanted to make her a little thinking of you gift and socks felt like the right thing to do. Now I originally ordered yarn for this. I ordered, um, which I don't have to hand annoyingly, next time. Um, but I ordered a skein of Nora George 100% Merino in rose water. And it's absolutely gorgeous. It's this creamy pink and white. It's really, really lovely. I just didn't like the way it was knitting up. And I think it's because I'm so used to having nylon in my socks. Um, that's just what I prefer. And I just, it just wasn't working for me. So I ripped it out. Um, I think I've got halfway down the, no, I don't even, I think I got th halfway through the heel when I was like, this just isn't working. And I reached for this instead. And I just found this so much better for a pair of socks because it's got that nylon content. It just didn't have that kind of plump fluffiness that I just was really worried wouldn't wear as well. I've never knit 100% merino socks before, to my knowledge, to my memory. Um, and I didn't want to give her something that was difficult to look after. So. I went for nylon. However, that is really beautiful yarn and I have it already balled up. So my plan for that is to knit it into a litmus cow with a contrast color. I'm thinking gray, um, cause pink and gray is beautiful and I don't need a cowl. So it will go into my box of Christmas presents and that'd be a really lovely thing to give to somebody. But yeah, so these are done. The most amazing thing about these socks is how quickly I knit them. So I started the first one on Monday and had it finished by Wednesday. And um, and I didn't have the week off. I was working and things like that. And um, I started the second one a day or so later and had it finished by Friday, quite late on Friday, I think. Um, so yeah, these turned around in like four or five days, which is... Do you remember when I couldn't knit socks and here I am churning them out in a month? Like, I think that's pretty impressive. I'm impressed with myself. So that is faux number one. Next up is this pair. This is totally gorgeous. These are knit entirely out of Stranded Dye Works yarn. So the main body of the sock is her BFL base and it is Naive Watercolor. And the gray is First Frost, which is in the Merino Nylon. And as before, based on my Cuff down vanilla sock recipe from the lovely ladies at Meanwhile at the Castle. Story time. So the main body of the sock is um, actually a gift. So Amy, if you watch Amy of Stranded Dye Works and the Stranded podcast, she knit the Timely Cardigan. Um, oh, I don't know when, but she striped it with Naive Watercolor and First Frost. It was around the time she was launching her BFL base and I expressed... Um, a curiosity about what it felt like compared to the merino and she said she had some leftovers from her time leak so she would send it to me because it was enough for a pair of socks and it certainly was and I decided a couple of weeks ago maybe a month what is time I decided to pair it with this gray now I've had this in my stash for at least a year so I completely forgot until I'd literally finished the first sock and was halfway through the second sock that she had paired 
this kind of bluey purple greeny blend with the grey to make her striped timely cardigan. So that is why I've called them my timely socks. But yeah, I got really excited. I was like, oh my God, I love how these look together. They look so nice. I just look at the way the, you know, they've got the really simple plain gray against the like bright blues and it just sings. And then I literally got halfway through the second sock and realized she had striped these exact yarns together to knit her timely cardigan. So much for originality. But I absolutely love them together. It doesn't change the fact that they are absolutely stunning and I kind of want a timely myself. And I'm not like a massive cardigan person really. But yeah, this striped together, be beautiful. I will just say, because um, the reason she sent me this was to kind of test out the BFL base. Um, it, you can feel the difference. So if you feel here, this is kind of more fuzzy and the merino, which I have, merino nylon, which I have in the cuff, heel and toe, is a lot smoother. But I would not say in any way was this itchy or like any kind of discomfort in it against the skin. It literally just feels fuzzy and smooth, which is quite nice. I do actually have the BFL base in a Christmas sock. I think it was Gingerbread House. I'm sure I got that in BFL. Anyway, so yeah, I have some BFL socks and I really like them. They feel cozy because of the fuzz, I think. And last but not least, I finished my first ever patterned socks. So these are the Elton In socks by uh, Kalisha Ryan of the Quirky Monday podcast. And I knit these out of uh, this is First Frost again by Stranded Dye Works, the merino nylon base. And the orange and blue stripe is Companion 4 ply from Third Volt Yarns in the colorway Binti. And this colorway is based on a series of books by Nanedi Okorafor uh, called Binti. And the reason I loved this book series is because Binti, the protagonist, the heroine, is a young woman from the Himba tribe. And it's a sci-fi novel. And it was just so refreshing for it not to be, um, you know, a white man or woman from a European or Western background in the sci-fi novel. That was really nice because she, there was a lot of um, discussion about um, the beliefs of her tribe and her culture and how that translates into this very, very modern world that she now lives in. And it was just, I found that really interesting. And I would like to see more of that in sci-fi because we've seen enough of what does the Western world look like in a hundred years time. So I'm going to get off my soapbox um, because these are finished and I am delighted. If you have watched the last few episodes, you will know that I wasn't having the best time with the heel because um, as you saw in the other two heels, if you've watched for any length of time, you will know that I am a heel flap and gusset kind of gal and it's just because it's familiar it's comfortable I know what I'm doing pretty much know the thing off by heart and it just is easy and quick because it's easy whereas this was a different heel and I'd never done it before and short rowing is just not something I'm great at I'm just gonna say it I'm not great at the short rows which is practice it's just practice you know so I tried on the advice of many of you in the comments so thank you so much um the german short rows and i am much happier i'm not super duper it's still a little bit gappy as you can see and i'm not super duper happy with like the pickup here um i think i did one of them in a way that was not too bad yeah like the pickup on this one here i think is really really good whereas this one, which I think was the first sock, to be fair. Um, yeah, I don't really, I think it's fine. It's not super noticeably bad. I just think, you know, when I see this one, oh, I can do it neatly. There is, it, like, it's possible. So yeah, I'm really happy to have tried this new heel. I've only kind of pulled them on briefly. This is actually still a bit damp because it's blocking. Um, but um, it did feel very comfortable. It actually felt, dare I say, more comfortable than my heel flap and gusset. So there's that. I, I'm not gonna lie, I really struggled with the kind of, 
it's not moss stitch it's but this textured stitch down the middle i really struggled with it i don't really know what happened but like halfway down the foot of the first sock it just clicked and suddenly i was like i can binge the last kingdom and do this and not make any mistakes and i didn't which was just shocking really <laughs> frankly and when i got to the second sock just just did it just whizzed through it like I, how long did this take me this took me i mean i started this at the beginning of the summer of socks cow which was in june and i only finished it while i was dog sitting which was the first week of september and it's now the 12th of september um and i finished the second sock already so i turned this around in maybe four days because once this clicked, once this textured pattern clicked, I was just like, this is amazing, I love it so much. So I think I might be sold on um, on textured, not textured socks, sorry, patterned socks. I really love this texture. So I think I do definitely want to knit some Christmas socks because I've got that beautiful yarn um, from Tiny Human Knits that I want to knit up and um, West Yorkshire Spinners have announced their new Christmas colorway and you know I always get that. Um, I'm not sure how I feel about the new one. If you haven't seen it, I will link to the post below that West Yorkshire Spinners put out about it. Look at me just casually saying West Yorkshire Spinners, like I never had a problem with it. Um, thank you also to the person who tagged me in that post. I really appreciate that. That was really kind of you. Thank you. Um, but yes, I don't know how I feel about it because it's very blue, which I get is like frosty and cold and I just don't know if it's going to fit in my aesthetic, you know? So, but I'm going to get it anyway and see. We're going to find out. Honestly, there's so much blather. It's almost like I haven't podcasted in a month and I've lost my touch. <laughs> now, I lied when I said it was only foes because I do have a whip. Now, you will have noticed, oh, I don't think you can see them anymore. <laughs> But I used um, the first frost as a contrast on my timely socks and on my um, Eltonin slash Binti socks. Um, but I still had a little bit left, so bear with me. I have about this much left and it will be going into my crochet stripes, which I have done a few rows on. I did not take this house sitting because I had to, I was working from home, so I had to take my work computer, when I was working clearing, I had to have a separate computer, <laughs> plus, you know, the socks I packed, plus clothes, obviously, and shampoo and all that kind of stuff. So I, there's just no room. There was no room for this absolute beast. So here we go. This is, look, look how chunky it is. So what I've done on here is before the grey, I put in about a row and a bit of the Naive Watercolour. I'm now putting in the grey, which I will just use up because there's only this tiny little bit left. And then after that, I will put in the kind of binty colourway, the orange and the blue, because I use the grey on both of them. So it seems neat to me that I would have them on either side of the grey. I have loads left of both the... Uh, the Binti, the Naive Watercolour and the Adelaide Cottage. So once I've put some in here, I will wind some off for my Advent yarn swap. And what is left is going to a lovely friend of mine who has learnt to crochet. So if you watched the episode a few episodes ago where I had one of my friends kind of drop in with a little bit that she'd uh, filmed to talk about the cow that I gave her, she actually learnt to crochet. And she has been obsessed with this bad boy ever since she saw it, like a picture of it. And then she came to my house and was like, want to steal it. Um, but now she's learnt to crochet for herself. I said, well, you can make your own and then you can stop threatening to take mine. Um, so this was preemptive action. So I've made her like a big bag of scraps. Um, basically, I don't like to put, usually I will put about 10 grams into this, but if it's more than 10 grams, I feel like it becomes too wide uh, a stripe and kind of draws the eye when I want it to just be like a schmush of color. So 
I've kind of the bits where I didn't use the whole of the mini I put to one side and I've given to her and I will be giving her the Binti, the Naive Watercolour and the Reader I Married Him. So that will go towards her scrap blanket, which is really lovely because it means there's going to be colours in mine and in hers um, until she kind of starts accumulating her own scraps. Um, so yeah, I'm very excited. Also, for the record, that's nearly finished. Um, it's like, it's less than a third to go. So I'm quite excited about that. I feel like I could finish it this year. Having said that though, I do feel a little bit lost because I literally finished my Binti socks, the Eltonin socks even, uh, yesterday. So today's Saturday, I finished them yesterday, I blocked them last night and I just haven't had time to cast a new pair of socks on, which is a shame. And I didn't really have time to sit down and work on my carry town either so I've been reaching for my crochet stripes this morning while having my coffee and because yes apparently I have coffee some mornings I don't know um and when I was watching a film last night so I'm kind of at the point now where I'm like okay well I need to start thinking about new stuff so the cozy stripes blanket is of course way too big to be grab and go knitting but it is really good for just mindlessly going which is great um, I don't have a pair of socks on the needles, so I need to remedy that because a pair of socks on the needles means that if I have to go out, which I'm still not doing too much, to be perfectly honest, um, but if I have to go out, I've got something with me and I've got something with me for meetings and films, etc. Um, however, I think I'm going to leave it at that for cast-ons because I do want to work on my Kerry Town and now I have no reason not to because once more I have cleared the needles, there is nothing else for me to work on except the litmus cow. Okay, okay, scrap that. I will cast on the litmus cow um, instead of a pair of socks and that will be my grab and go knitting because it's, I think, just round and round and round. It's also got a provisional cast on which I've never done before. Um, so interesting, fun times, content if nothing else. Speaking of content, what I have here is my Christmas sock collection so far. Now I'm not going to pull them all out, um, but I keep them in this project bag in my wardrobe because they don't have a proper home yet. And I feel like this is quite a wintry kind of pattern. So it makes sense that they are in here. Um, but also in here, I have these. Now these were sent to me by a lovely viewer called Anna who asked um, if I would like them because they weren't going to fit her and she felt they would make a beautiful addition to my Christmas box of socks. Unfortunately, I don't know off the top of my head what this yarn is, which is a real shame because it is gorgeous, but I will ask her and I will link it down below. And I think this was a really clever idea for a contrast. I would never have put this kind of, I don't wanna call it beige because I always say beige like it's a bad thing. I don't like beige. I remember being a teenager and being like, eat beige. Um, but this is really nice, so I don't want to call it that. I'm going to call it sand. Sand. Um, which is quite good, actually, because she's from Australia, so we've got Christmas on the beach. That's literally just occurred to me and made me really happy. <laughs> God. Honestly, it's the little things. It's the little things. Global pandemic. It is the little things we need to hang on to. So, um... As you may have noticed, there's no heel. She sent me a little mini skein of this sand colorway, which is sparkly as well. Ooh. So yeah, gonna have a go at putting an afterthought heel into this. I don't know how I feel about that. I do know how I feel about that, I feel frightened. I feel frightened. Um, before we go into that, I really like this pattern. So it's uh, ribbed down the leg and then ribbed across the top of the foot. And I feel like that is going to be such a snuggy. It's gonna be so snuggy. So nice. Hmm. Anyway, I shouldn't just be admiring these on camera. I should be talking about afterthought heel fear. And I know it shouldn't be scary because you just pick up, cut and knit a knit a heel in and I'm sure there are many many YouTube videos out there but I am scared because what if I cut in the wrong place um I'm going to find as I said a YouTube video but I thought what I might do is film the process 
of me doing this. And this will not be a tutorial because I have never done this before in my life. It could go really, really wrong. But I thought I'm trying new things and things like cutting your knitting and you know trying something new can be really scary even if you're not a beginner even if you're somebody who has been knitting for 10 20 30 years but you've never done this before it can be really like intimidating so i thought i would do a little video of me doing it so i can show you it's nothing to be scared of we are really really lucky to live in the time that we live in where we have so much at our fingertips and yeah, so I'm probably going to film that. Having said that, I might also film having a go at provisional cast on for the first time as well. Just to show you there's nothing to be scared of. So yeah, that is, that is it for knitting, for whipped up. Even though there were minimal whips, mostly foes. It was, a, it was an over foe of foes. That was bad, wasn't it? Wow. I sense this is going to be a slightly longer podcast than usual, so apologies if you've gotten quite used to the, you know, 20 to 30 minutes. Um, but it's been a while, so we're having a catch up, it's fine. But now, as I promised at the top of the episode, it is time to share the winners of the Summer of Socks Cal. So, if you do hear your name, or your Ravelry, or your Instagram name, you are a winner. So do contact me either on Ravelry or Instagram, whichever one you feel most comfortable using to let me know. And in that message, I will need to know a couple of things. First of all, do you want your pattern prize sent to you via Ravelry or via a different method like email? Um, so I'll need to know that. And secondly, if you're an Instagram winner, I will need to know what your Ravelry name is if that is the place you want your pattern prize sent. I hope that made sense. I'll make it make more sense down below. <laughs> um, just a heads up, I am not using Ravelry too much at the moment because it does make my eyes ache and it's just not super pleasant for browsing. So I am only checking Ravelry once, sometimes twice a week. So if you don't hear back from me immediately, please don't worry. It's just a case of minimizing my time on there. I'm gonna whiz through these really quickly, but I will put the name up on the screen here. I'm gonna whiz through these fairly quickly because I have a lot, which is always wonderful to share. Um, but before I do, thank you once again to everybody who got involved in the cowl. I really, really appreciate it. I know it was a little bit different this year because of the issues around Ravelry. So I'm really sorry if you felt unable to get involved in the chatter thread on Ravelry. Um, as I said, I will be pulling half of my winners from Instagram, um, but I am thinking about ways in which I can make it more accessible for next year because it will be back next year. Thank you so much if you donated one of these patterns. I really, really appreciate it. It's people like you that make these giveaways possible. And just thank you from the bottom of my heart. Thank you, it was really, really kind of you. So I'm gonna put the name of the pattern and the name of the winner on the screen here. So even if you're not a winner, you can go and check out the patterns as well. So first up, we have the Elton In Socks by Kalisha Ryan of the Quirky Monday podcast, which I knit myself. And that pattern has been won by GrannyFly81. Now, the next two patterns have been donated by The Project Bag UK, and the first one is the Lara's Legacy Socks. These have been won by Why The Floof, which is a fantastic name. And I just wanted to remind everyone, in case you missed it, when I first uh, referenced this pattern a few episodes ago, the money raised through sales of this this pattern will be donated to the Bliss charity in the UK. And this is the charity that raises money to research um, fetal medicine and prematurity. So it's a really great cause. So if you did want to get a copy of this pattern for yourself, you would be helping that charity. So that's also a lovely thing to do. Next up from the Project Bag UK is the Old School Sock. And this one has been won by Keel Rain. And I really hope I've pronounced that properly. <laughs> Snowy Thistle Knits. Can you tell I needed to do that a little bit slowly? <laughs> Snowy Thistle Knits donated the Wee Dram Socks. And these have been won by Mr. X Clyden? Slyden? I wasn't sure which to go with. I think Clyden, but it's up on the screen, so hopefully that helps. The next couple are from Winnie Wombat, so thank you so much. First up, we have the Chocker Block Socks, and these have been won by E-N-R-N, -N, 
And she also donated the Invisible Heartstrings, and that has been won by Mari Nitzalot. Now from Vintage Cyanide Designs, we have two mixtape sock clubs. We actually have three, but the other one will be for an IG winner. So we're gonna go for the first two now. One of those has been won by Tree Source Limited, and the second one has been won by Rosie Marie 87. Now the very last Ravelry winner will win a beautiful pattern from the Crimson Stitchery, and it is a pattern of your choice. And that has been won by N Morton one and now for the Instagram winners. Again, we have a copy of the Elton in Socks by Kalisha Ryan from the Quirky Monday podcast. And that has been won by underscore Ellen Brewster. We have another pair of the Lara's Legacy Socks and they have been won by Rebecca Sison. Sison down there because I probably haven't pronounced that correctly. Books and Horses has kindly donated a copy of Hokey Locatelli's Flores Socks and that has been won by Pamplemoose.makes. Snowy Thistle Knits donated the Courage Cow and in a lovely display of serendipity that has been won by Winnie Wombat and Winnie Wombat also donated two more patterns for our IG winners. Her self-compassion sock pattern has been won by a lonely sock lady. We have one more of that beautiful mixtape sock club from Vintage Cyanide Designs. And that has been won by Nana GD2. And last, but by no means least, the lovely Anushka of the Crimson Stitchery podcast and designs donated another pattern of your choice for an IG winner as well. And that has been won by Katsuko.knits. So there we go. That is it. That is all of the winners. And that is the Summer of Socks cow done for another year. And we will be back doing it again next year. And as I said, I will be working on a way to have a different chatter thread hosted elsewhere. So fingers crossed, we will be okay to have full chatter next year. But now let's move on to a very quick <laughs> knit and natter. <laughs> Okay, I am going to keep this short because I have talked a lot and I'm worried about the battery. I'm worried about the time it's gonna take me to edit and caption this. I am also using a mic for the first time. So I'm just, I'm just generally worried. And also, I just don't think you guys wanna sit here listening to me for hours on end. <laughs> so I'm going to try and keep this short and sweet. I wanted to talk a little bit about the quarantine roller coaster, the quarantine coaster, if you will because in the last episode I talked about feeling a lot better and it was great to be able to see people and I really felt like I was I was coming up and I'm still fine, I'm completely fine, but I did find that August had a lot more slumps than I had been hoping for or even expecting. A lot of that is because anxiety set in about lockdown easing. I think I did kind of mention that in the last episode, but um, I don't know, I'm not a medical professional, I don't know if I'm doing enough, just by masking up, just by washing my hands, just by trying to keep off of public transport, keeping myself outside when I'm seeing people. I don't know if that's enough. I don't know if another lockdown is coming. I don't know if this lockdown should have gone on a lot longer. And as you can see, there's just a, a lot going on in my head right now. And um, so yeah, I was feeling quite anxious about that, which was probably not helped by the fact I was working quite a lot as well. Uh, and then I um, found out that the last two things I had booked for the year, a couple of shows, had been rescheduled to next year. And I am of course incredibly lucky that they have been rescheduled and not completely cancelled. Um, but I, I felt really sad about that. And I know that's really silly because if I... If the worst that can happen to me during this pandemic is I don't get to go and see a theatre show, I mean, that's pretty good going. Um, but, you know, I planned a lot for this year. It was going to be this really epic year of seeing stuff and doing stuff, and I haven't been able to do any of that. And there is a grief in that, um, which is rubbish, <laughs> to be quite honest. It is rubbish. You know, I do keep counting my blessings because my friends and family continue to be safe and healthy, which is the main thing. And I am able to see people now, which is also a really, really good thing. But I couldn't help but be sad um, that this, you know, these kind of symbols of me having a really good year and doing a lot more things and, you know, all that personal stuff had been canceled, rescheduled, rescheduled. So yeah, that was 
that was a bit rubbish. I am now, as you can see, getting back to making videos and I'm really excited about that because I love making this podcast, I really do. Um, I don't always love the editing process, but um, but I, I really enjoy making the, the podcast. I've really enjoyed branching out into other videos and you know, I know there are those of you who are only here to watch the podcast and probably when you see those other videos pop up, you just ignore them and wait for this to come along, which is totally fine. Um, but for those of you who have watched them and kind of commented, that is so lovely of you. Thank you so much because honestly making videos <laughs> really has helped me get through this because it's been something that I've been wanting to do for literal years. I've been wanting to do more with this channel um, and explore more things. And you know, when I talk about making videos of me trying things for the first time, like a provisional cast on or an afterthought heel, this is stuff I've been wanting to do for ages. And I just like the idea of making a video and sharing it with you guys. Um, so I really appreciate everyone who watches the podcast and everyone who's watched my other videos. I just think that's really lovely of you. Thank you. <laughs> and I'm gonna call it there because wow, I think I've like talked my lipstick off and I have a lot of stuff to put away because the beauty of podcasting is this looks great. You can't see what's happening here or here or here. It's a mess. It's an absolute mess. And I'm gonna tidy it up and then I'm gonna have a sandwich. And then I am going to have a go editing this bad boy. But yes, have a lovely couple of weeks. I will be back in a couple of weeks um, with another cup of tea. But um, take care, stay safe, stay healthy, and I will see you very soon for another cuppa. Bye.